Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In today's episode, I'd like to share a change that came in with C++20 that might bite you in your production environment. My example comes from one of my training classes where in fact it um, did bite me. So what we have here is I have this struct point here with two data members X and Epsilon. So my base case in the class was to show that I have some struct and that I can assign this. One of the questions that came up then, we were talking about structured bindings, but let's get rid of them. Here they are not relevant. One of the questions that came up is, this assignment, does it copy or does it move? So would this code compile without a copy constructor? So I modified my original code to be like that. I have now a deleted copy constructor and a defaulted move constructor to still keep the movability of this struct here. And I went for a struct, you know, I do that in my classes and sometimes on the slides to, well, compress the code that I have to show and to write. Now this got me into this trouble. What you can see here is this code perfectly compiles. I mean, yeah, of course it does. That was my intention. But then the next day, one of the attendees came back asking a question. Why does the code not compile on his machine? And it took me a while to figure out the difference. And the first difference was that that person used C++ 20 in their compiler. And as you can see, the code suddenly stops compiling. I did not change a single line of or character of code, but it stops compiling. And the question is why? I mean, the compiler below here tells me an error message that it's not finding a matching constructor to initialize point here. Now, the thing is what happens. So if I go back to C++ 17, you can see here, this is the reason why I'm showing you the AST today. You can see here what the compiler thinks about my struct point. And among a lot of things, it thinks it's an aggregate and standard layout. So that means what I have here is something that more or less is compatible to a C struct. Once I change to C++ 20 mode, you can see that the compiler here no longer thinks it's an aggregate. It still thinks it's standard layout due to the data types, but no longer that it is an aggregate. And that's the reason for the compile error here, because for aggregates, I don't need a constructor. I simply initialize the data members here with my curly brace initialization in line number 10. But now since in C++ 20, the rules have changed. And I think for the right reasons, because we are tempering with special members in the class. So that's no longer an aggregate. And this is what the compiler now thinks of in C++ 20 as well. And hence, there is no constructor anymore initializing X or Epsilon. Would I provide one? Let's say um, like this, a real simple one. Just like this, does not initialize anything, but then it would compile again. This is one change that happened in C++ 20 coming from C++ 17. You might notice a breaking difference here. And if this bites you in your code base, you now know why. And as I already said, I think it's for the right reason because once I start adding special members and even if it's to showcase a point in the training class, that thing is no longer naked. So it's better now in C++ 20. But remember that once you stumble over a compile error when you update your code base from C++ 17 to 20 or 23. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.